speak up? I can. Yeah, I can speak up. Is that loud enough? Or you want to hold this mic? Oh, you're very close to the speaker, so maybe it's not going to work. Uh, all right. Um, I just I just had two short topics to talk about, uh, so I called it odds and ends. The first one will be the odds. The second one will be the ends. Um, so um, last year, if you were at the conference. Uh, you probably remember that uh, Jackie Waldring and I had worked on an update to the PPC archive disk to add uh, scannable uh, HP41 barcodes to all the PPC journals. That took the better part of a year uh, to do and added almost 6,000 pages of material to the disk. Before that conference ended, um, he and I discussed possibly doing the same treatment to the British data file uh, issues from the HPCC group and um, there was a lot of was a lot of burnout at the from the conference onward and neither of us were ready to jump right back into it uh, immediately at that point but we did kind of seriously get into it at the I guess in the late maybe in the late spring we started working on it and we decided well let's do a limited portion of the disk so uh, of the of the issues and there's the disc has got 31 years of the of the issues and uh, we thought well if we can get the first five volumes done uh, 1982 to 86 that might get the bulk of the 41 material so we started working on it and in reality we managed to get the first six years so you get all the way through 1987 I'm, I'm sorry a not here but so uh, you've got a copy of the disc here um, if you uh, if you start it up, it should auto start. I, we, we realized this morning that a Mac it'll run on a Mac with parallels nicely, but on a native Mac you might have some issues. Uh, I guess we're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. But um, you get your opening screen, and in the lower left hand corner there um, is where the updates took place. And I, I just drew boxes around some stuff, so you'll see some notes here about scannable barcode. Uh, also, in parallel with that, I, I was working on a data file index as well, so we kind of kept up with each other, and the index covers the first six volumes as well. I think it's 32 issues. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. So th this is what I call the jump page on the disk for the, for the 31 years of data file, and we worked in, in, in this area here with the big rectangle. And if you were to uh, go to that guy there, the volume three, number three, and click on that, it would take you to that issue as it, as it always has. But now, uh, similarly to what we did with the PTC Journal, um, HP 41 programs now have a red rectangle around them, and you can click on that, and it will actually take you to, the, to, the, to, to Jackie's file for that guy. And in addition, for each volume, there is a program index, and we added a bookmark over here saying you can go directly to the program index. So if you choose program index, you'll see the program index for volume three, number three, and that volume, that issue happens to have four program, four HP 41 programs in it. And you could click on one of the select buttons and, and it would take you to that, to that uh, particular one. So here, here is that same one. And um, here is the, the first page, I think it's a three page file. And here's the first page of the file with the program listing and the last page actually has the barcode and if you print that out it's in really it's really high res and you'll be able to scan it right into your calculator uh, similarly to what's already in there for the for, from the from the PPC journals so this is the tally we, we did a similar tally last year but um, yeah there were 32 issues uh, in the or, uh, that were handled for a total of 250 files program files totaling a, a little bit over 1,100 pages of, of material and it was quite an intense uh, you know, several weeks there getting, getting all this stuff in there. Uh, so going back to the jump page again there are bookmarks on the left and um, one that was added was the index uh, volumes 1 to 6 and if you click on that or if you go from any particular issue and I used volume 5 number 1 as an example here you'll also see a bookmark that says take you to the index. So from either of those kind of places, you can get to the index and there's, it's indexed five different ways and this is just the top portion of the first page of three of those ways, but the index was 
the index is being done in Excel and and then I just sort the different columns and then produce PDF so you, so it's sorted by issue by title by author by documentation type or by uh, calculator model and you can see from the bookmarks here um, you can skip around and jump from one to the other back and forth so you can you know see what you want and each of those files is I believe it's like 11 pages long there were uh, 980 entries so far um, but this is, doesn't cover just the 41 stuff this is you know comprehensive so the goal the lofty goal was to index everything and to do the 41 stuff um, with respect to the 41 though uh, if you go back to the chart you'll notice that it looks like uh, 1986 may have been the peak as far as um, programs that, uh, done. There were 85 programs in the volume 5 and of, of 1986. Volume 6 it had dropped to 32. And in this time period, a lot of things were happening. Um, the, uh, the, the, the 71 had been out a couple of years and it was really, uh, there was a lot of activity on the 71. So they were spending more, they, they had a lot more uh, HP 71 articles in the data file issues. So the 41 stuff starts to drop and we're guessing that the 41 stuff will kind of drop to a trickle and maybe by um, five years from then, you know, there'll probably be less than one program per issue. Um, we, haven't, we haven't really investigated for sure you know, which issues got the last 41 program. Uh, and there may, be, there may be one in the, you know, in the, in the most recent year, but uh, I suspect it'll be in, you know, insignificant after a while. And, and this 250 file count will probably represent way more than half the number of total uh, HP 41 programs in the entire 30-some uh, years of the, of the uh, issues. So that was the odd. Here's the end, uh, completely unrelated. Uh, I wanted to talk about the printed material for the WP34S and 31S uh, calculators, which are the repurposed uh, 20B or 30B uh, financials and I guess the 31S is the more recent one of the two and, and Eric Brecklin here is, is, is making both of these and still selling them. Of course you can make your own if you want. Um, but, but I wanted to show off those manuals because they're really impressive. But in the meantime, let's, let's just talk a little bit about the 31S because it's relatively new. So the 34S was started around I think 2009 and I think I talked about it in 2010 for the first time when they hadn't figured out how to port it to the actual hardware yet and, and Walter Bonin and Paul Dale were working on it and, and Marcus joined in and then they finally got it working on the hardware and uh, you know the rest is history they've been through several versions and it's really it's really nice they've crammed about everything you possibly can uh, into the thing uh, I'm surprised it doesn't have a kitchen sink button but you know. um, the 31S was firmware was done by two new guys Sanjeev this Vanatha and, and and Jonathan and uh, with the firm guidance of Walter. Okay. What's the and, difference? And I'm sure it was firm. Oh What's yeah. The difference between the two calculators. Non 31S is non. Your check is in the mail because <laughs> I've got a chart that compares the two. Okay. Um, but for people that were intimidated by the 34S, the 31S is, is sort of a, a subset of that. But you'll see it. So I just took some pictures of the two machines. These are the version numbers of the ones I have, and I think it's close to the most recent one. Uh, the 31S is version 1.2 now, 3671, and the 34S is, is the 3.3, and it's up to 3678. Which is the latest. Okay, good. I wanted to talk about the Y display capability, because I think this Y display capability is fabulous. I could swear it, other people may have done it, but I could swear I personally had sent a question to Walter way back when saying, well, why don't you try to display the Y register in the alpha, you know, in the dot matrix, and he poo-pooed it and he made some statement like, there's really not a lot of columns or dots and it probably won't work. So a couple years later, a smart guy came up with this, uh, with this method of doing the Y display and, and it, it kind of turns it into a 35S essentially, and it's really nice. Um, one thing you'll notice from these two, and I think they both work the same way, on the right hand one you'll see that the letter, the numbers are a little taller. And I think that's, 
and that's like the full height of the dot matrix. I think that's because the number being displayed is is only five characters in a decimal point. So to preserve the aspect ratio, he uses the full height of the screen. On the left, he's got a longer number, and, and the letter D there is an indicator that I have the double precision turned on in a, in a 34S, otherwise you wouldn't see the D. But I believe the height of the characters would be the same, but since there's a lot to show, and you're gonna have to cram it in there, I believe they reduced the font by one row of pixels, just so that it was proportional. Uh, but otherwise, it's great, and I leave it on all the time. It's a new mode in the thing, and I guess they, Walter was convinced that it was worthy of the project, and they and they took it on. So, your check is in the mail. Um, the, I may have made some mistakes here, so please correct me if I screwed up. Um, the 31S is, is a non-programmable machine, but it's based on the 34S code as a starting point. Uh, they both will allow you either a four or an eight level stack mode. The double precision mode is not available in the 31. I'm not really sure why. Um, I suspect there would have been space for it, but the guys, the, 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 the two guys just didn't do it. Walter's, Walter's guidance. He didn't, uh, well, no, Walter published, I'll put a note on saying, anyone who wants to use one that simple could possibly want double precision. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't see them, uh, well, okay. Anyway, I don't agree. Okay, so the once wide display. Test once or twice with Walter, you give up. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or so even 11 or 12. The wide display capabilities available on both, which I'm really happy about. Well, for memory registers. The same room that the world wants <laughs> <laughs> Of course, if you're not writing programs, you probably can't remember where you've thrown all your data, so the data registers is reduced down to about 20 dozen. It's uh, there's 0 through 9 and AB. ABCD, so it's up like to, 14 or up to 14 or L or something? Okay. L, yeah, but it's not 23. It's, okay, it's, it's, it may be 24, 25, I forget. No, no, it's like Less. 15 or 16. It's like 15 or 16. Okay. It's, um, it's the di single digits and the letters, and the letters up to F, B or F or something. Oh. So okay. Um, there are no flags because you wouldn't use them if you're not writing programs. Um, this machine has got a full undo, which I assume would be the equivalent of the last the, the last stack on the RPL machines, kind of. It's like retrieving the entire state of the machine back state. from the last time you did and it. There are some minor minor limitations, but it's essentially the entire state. Okay. Um, statistics and probability with 14 stat registers are, are present in both. Fraction mode present in both. Uh, although the 31 does not have the complex operations or the matrix and the vector math. Uh, the physical constants conversions are in both, uh, and the 31 does not have the base arithmetic or the special alpha characters, which I'm not sure you'd use anyway if you're not writing programs. So that's, I guess, the basic uh, difference between the two. And it's a lot less intimidating uh, uh, to look at because it's only got a single shifted key plane. So Can you pass it around? Yeah. 31 is? If it, anybody want to? Well, 34 is a lot more popular. Um, yeah, they, both of these were ones that, that Eric, uh, Eric built. So. Okay, so I just want to talk about printed manuals. I guess the first printed manual was Walter's 34S manual in, the, in a paperback format, and it's really nice and, and whatnot, and it covers the 3.2 firmware, and of course they, they didn't stop developing the machine, so it, it moved on, and he, he you know, notified people who was working on it, and they, he got a request since people were producing, uh, I guess it was HP documentation with the no, the 50G AUI with the right with the spiral. If you call, if you want to call this spiral, uh, some people call it cone band. I think no, no, no this, this is this spiral. is spiral. That's, that's, that's spiral. spiral. All right, because they're all like individual curls. But in any case, um, so he said, all right, he'll do. He'll change it when he updates it to the spiral band. And uh, he produced the 34S with the version 3.3 in the spiral bound, and then he went ahead and did 31S in the spiral bound as well. Both of these are fabulous. Where do you uh, get them? Uh, your, your check's in the middle. <laughs> um, you'll, you'll see that in a minute. Um, one's about twice as thick as the other, and the, uh, the last cost was like 35 with shipping from the U.S., and the other was a little over 50. 
with shipping from the U.S. and he's printing 20 at a time and then sending them around. So, and I can, if, maybe I should pass one around. thing. They have a lot of information in them besides just how to use that machine. There's a lot of historical information on HP machines and the evolution and all that. So if you're just a fan, even if not in this version or in that version, yes. both. both. Yeah. There's a little bit less in the newer ones. And of course, it's nice you can open lay it down a table and it doesn't. A lot of information, but the statistical functions which you wouldn't necessarily guess. So. Um, Walter has been handling his orders through the HP Museum Forum, and this was a sample from August uh, in the area called Not Quite HP Calculators But Related, which is where this stuff lives. He's been maintaining a thread where people said, yeah, I'd like to get on the bandwagon and be in your next batch of orders. And every couple days he would say, okay, I'm up to 17 now. And when he finally gets to 20, he would, I think, send a notice to each of those people saying, okay, send me money by PayPal or you know and then I'll, I'll, I'll get them printed and, and mail them out to you so it's all been done through the museum through the not quite HP calculators area which is in the bottom group of, of, of forum areas there um, I should also mention that for in, in the you know in the early days with the 3.1 firmware uh, a beginner's user guide was produced and that's still available for free as a download, I, I love the URL, conehead.org, um, and a guy by the name of Ciaran Brady has produced that, and it's it's real nice, only it's not the latest firmware, but this shows, this shows the one, I guess he's just stopped, right. so it, it's a couple of years old, but it's real nice. But if you want to learn, learn yeah. how to use it, it's quite it's, nice. It's really, really nice, and this one you can get without, you know, you can download it anytime you want. So it's uh, 187 pages, so it's quite quite uh, thorough. Um, so the last thing I want to say is, and maybe this is a good lead-in or segue to later in the mm -hmm. conference. Uh, keep your fingers crossed for potentially for uh, you know what they're looking for for the next firmware evolution, running on a, some sort of a DIY calculator uh, that they've been uh, fondly nicknaming the 43S. And this, I believe, is the latest uh, keyboard layout. It, it hasn't changed in a few months. Um, and I've got the URL there with the, you know, where you can go see what's going on. I guess they're kind of waiting around here to hear anything. When, there were, uh, when it was a possibility that Eric Smith was not going to come to this conference, uh, Walter uh, sent me an email saying he was worried you know, that if, if Eric or Richard Otteson weren't coming, that, you know, that they didn't know what they were going to do, so maybe uh, maybe we'll hear more later. So that's that's all I got. Um, on to the next. Thank you, Jake.